Remaking a film is never easy. You have to find the right balance of picking things to keep from the original entry and then building upon them to either elevate them to superior heights or reimagine them into something entirely new, yet brilliant. It's a terribly difficult thing to get right, as if you change too much you stand to alienate the fans of the first entry, and if you change too little then there isn't much point in the final product. And with a crowd as passionate as the horror community, you better make it worth their while. These are 10 remakes that I feel have been unfairly maligned by unforgiving audiences that relish failure. They deserve another look, now the heat from their releases have died down and we can judge them with some fresh eyes. Number 10, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And then what'd she do? She shot herself. You ain't lying to me again, are you? No. Because I have never seen a weapon go off without somebody's finger on the fucking trigger. This is one of the most notoriously hated remakes on the list. Upon release and over the years, this remake got such a battering. It's mostly seen as a less scary IKEA flat pack version of the much loved original. However, I find this comparison is really unfair, and in some areas it really surpasses the original in terms of sheer panic. Did everyone just fall asleep every time Arlie Ermey is on screen? The dude is unbelievably terrifying as Sheriff Hoyt. He's genuinely intimidating, and his chilling backstory of gaining a taste for human flesh during the Korean War really made my skin crawl. I like the interpretation of Leatherface here too. Instead of the clumsy, childlike brute he was in the 74 version, here he's a force of pure anxiety. He always charges into the movie randomly and just raises hell. It makes you nervous every time you catch a glimpse of him, because he's big, scary looking and causes so much pain. Leatherface went on to be treated as this sympathetic anti-hero figure for so many movies after this. I like that he's a pure villain here. His introduction in this remake rivals the first, it's still an insane rush of adrenaline no horror fan should miss out on. Many people complained about this version having blood when the original infamously contained so little, but I found the violence is actually very purposely done. It shows just enough gore to embed it in your brain, but never so much that it became gratuitous. People didn't like that it's been modernised with a much slicker look. I'm glad they never tried to replicate the original's visuals. The original looks like an old, unnerving documentary a lot of the time, it's very rough and grainy. I think it would have been a huge mistake and pissed people off more if they tried to replicate it since it would have just been a pale imitation. It's a film that switched things up to give a reimagined take on Texas Chainsaw that does its own thing instead of being a straight copy. I find the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre very creepy. I find the remake to be more intense, they offer unique experiences. Look, I'm not going to act like it doesn't have its flaws, because it does, and in many ways contains a lot of the annoying early 2000s traits, but it gets a lot more hate than it deserves. And let's be real, it's the best entry in the franchise besides the original by a mile. <laughs> Number 9, The Evil Dead I'll be honest, when this dropped, I was one of the people that was very disappointed in this movie, aside from thinking the cinematography was beautiful. The fact that the best scenes in the trailers weren't in the film really annoyed me. And then I stumbled across the accidentally unreleased version that aired on Film 4, which fixes a lot of the utterly painful, gaping plot holes. <laughs> it blows my mind the deleted scenes here weren't included in the theatrical cut. But over the years, I've softened, I've been able to take the film on its own merits, and actually I quite enjoy it. This 2013 version does make some huge changes, despite the main premise being pretty much a direct copy on paper. There seems to be two main problems that make people unfairly deride this version. One is that there's no Ash Williams, and instead we get the troubled Maya. And I'll just say it, Mia is a far better character than Ash from Evil Dead 1. They introduce a great subplot about her kicking heroin that causes her to be unpredictable even when not a rampaging demon. Ash was a goofy badass, and he fit the more fun, comedic tone the sequels went for. The remake is more serious and gritty, and I found her darker, more complex character completely awesome. The acting all round from the core cast I found to be terrific. Why don't you come down here so I can suck your cock, pretty boy? Mia. Mia, you fucking idiot! The second issue is the Deadites, and yes, the Deadites in the original were superior. These ones look generic and they have zero personality, but they are far more relentlessly violent. 
What the film lacks in character, it more than makes up for in crazy pacing and tension. People get absolutely mauled in numerous torturous ways, and blood is spilled so much the entire last act is basically filmed completely in the colour red. The music is also kick ass and it has a really thick atmosphere. It may have took itself too seriously and the deadites lacked character, but it was one of the most heart pounding gruesome horror films of the 2010s and gave fans the gore soaked thrills they craved. Bloody Disgusting actually named it the best horror horror film of the decade. And while I think that take is hot garbage, I think it shows people's opinion is starting to change. It's a different approach and style to the classic Sam Raimi original, and to write it off due to it not being exactly the same would mean to miss a gorgeous, horrifying experience. <gasps> original Wes Craven helmed Hills Have Eyes is a weird but fondly remembered piece of pulp horror. I'll be honest, I found it okay, but nothing special. The 2006 remake follows the same plot, but with a massive dose of intensity, and transforms the more basic looking cannibals into hideously deformed nuclear mutants. The designs of the mutants are spectacularly gross, brought to life with fantastic special effects, and the film as a whole has a sickeningly beautiful yet grim visual style. What we've become. <laughs> boom. 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 Where's my baby? The first scene of the mutants attacking is downright horrifying, and it makes sure the stakes are set high early on. It also has a lot of guts and isn't afraid of shocking its audience by making any character fair game to die at any point. The movie also brings some savage kills to the table, as the second half becomes a gore soaked showdown between the survivors and the mutants. With an unpredictable plot that throws characters straight in at the deep end and a unique setting, I found this to be an exhilarating and scary ride that arguably tops the original, and I believe it deserves better than the lukewarm reception it gets. The sequel is complete shit though. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Number 7. 13 Ghosts. This is probably the biggest stretch on the list, but hear me out. 13 Ghosts got ravaged by critics upon release, but it has formed a cult following for a reason. It's as loose of a loose remake of the 1960 film as you can get, and basically just cranked everything up to 11. The film's plot moves by so rapidly I was never bored, as the movie's visual style assaults you, showcasing the sensational production value that really flaunts its $42 million budget. I found each ghost to be distinct, and every one of them have an interesting, tragic backstory that is undeniably intriguing. Their stunning appearances are the highlight of the whole show. They also dispatch the main characters in a variety of gruesome ways. When's the last time you saw someone get bisected along the vertical plane? It may not be the least bit scary or believable, but it's a lot of fun. It looks wonderful, moves at an intense pace, and the titular ghosts steal the show as some of the most creative spectres you'll ever see. It should have focused more on the ghosts as they kinda seem to get pushed into the background of their own film, and yeah, I've seen scarier places spaghetti, but if you don't take it too seriously, it's an incredibly fun haunted house ride. Is it better than the original? <laughs> no, it's not a good movie, but I'd be lying if I said I couldn't pop it in, watch it all, and be entertained. Number 6, The Crazies. When you lay that gun down, Boy. This one is strange. The Crazies got decent reviews upon release, but I don't think I've had a single conversation where someone's mentioned it since it came out. No one ever brings it up when discussing good horror remakes, which is a shame as it really improves on the original. The original Crazies wasn't a movie that many were calling for a remake. It's a fairly forgettable wee film that I think is only fondly remembered because George Romero directed it. 
The remake pretty much improves it in every way. It sure packs a punch visually. A lot of the imagery contains moody shadows that really contribute enormously to the visceral style the film goes for. The horror comes not only from the titular crazy residents, but the government who swoop in and order everyone in the town to be killed too. They're fucked from all sides. This leads to some thrilling encounters, as our heroes avoid getting gunned down while also surviving infected farmers wielding pitchforks. It elevates its source material with a massive injection of style and action, and its pacing is on point, constantly ramping up the stakes to a bombastic finale. It's a mature take on a rather average original film that has great suspense, a slew of creepy visuals, and I think if you give it a chance, you'll be surprised how well it holds up. <laughs> Number 5, The Last House on the Left. This is a remake that doesn't update a lot from the original, but what it does, I really liked. Visually, it's terrific. It looks really grim and dark, it's the exact way I pictured a remake of the original. People seem to claim it's not as intellectual as the original. Um, okay, I don't think I fully agree, but I did enjoy my time with the remake more, which I think says a lot about the experiences each offer. I found the horror to be very real. The scene where the men assault the women was incredibly uncomfortable and unnerving, but it didn't linger on it like I was some sick voyeur scrolling through an illegal porn site. If you want to see how badly rape revenge tales can get, you need look no further than the I Spit on Your Grave remake that came out only a year later, and made me want to gouge my eyes out with how terrible it was. The violence is brutally portrayed, but the film doesn't fall into any of the trappings many other forgettable horror flicks were at the time. It's not afraid of holding shots for long stretches and letting the mood carry segments with no dialogue, but still allowing the intense moments to effectively hit you. The acting's also top notch, I think horror actors don't get enough praise for the emotionally gruelling stuff they have to go through, and here they pull it off so convincingly. This remake seems to have been lost to time while the original's legacy continues, and it's a shame as I think the remake is better. Huh? Oh, oh. I'm expecting a lot more fight out of you, John. Oh. Marrying a little French sure gave me a lot of fight. Number four, the blob. <laughs> Let's be real. The original, The Blob, is hard to take seriously. It's got a campy tone and a villain that could be right at home on a Saturday morning cartoon, but it has its place in history. The 1988 remake goes the exact opposite direction to make The Blob a genuinely frightening prospect. It's a far darker take that constantly escalates in stakes and violence up to a stunning climax. It took a slow moving gelatinous mass and made it absolutely terrifying. The special effects are out of this world, all done practically as people are absorbed, torn apart and melt in spectacular fashion. The alien shares a lot in common with John Carpenter's The Thing in this version, as blobby tentacles latch onto its victims, erupting suddenly out of nowhere and crushing them into gore soaked deaths. <laughs> It's a disturbing thought being broken down on a molecular level and absorbed into the purple goo, all while still alive and screaming. And this film captures that horror pretty much perfectly. The movie also manages to fit in some wry humour to balance out all the carnage filling the screen, even if the characters play second fiddle to the blob. Critics and audiences weren't that impressed with this version, and it notoriously bombed hard at the box office, but it really deserves more praise for managing to take such a silly concept and bringing it to another level. Number 3, The Night of the Living Dead, the 1990 version. It's not hard to see why the 1990 Night of the Living Dead gets overlooked so much, because the original film has been remade 3000 times, so it gets lost in the shuffle of the other cheap knockoffs. 
This version, directed by special effects legend Tom Savini, may follow the original heavily, but the changes it does make are enough to make it a great reimagining of the groundbreaking classic. And with Savini at the helm, the bloody special effects are stunning to boot. Whereas the original broke ground with a black protagonist, this version also allows Barbara to shine as the female heroine, rather than the catatonic useless lump of zombie chow that she was in the original. The original of course still holds up, but it can't be denied it's aged in many aspects, especially the action. This one hypes up the pace with much tighter editing and a focus on characters' actions at the price of gloomy atmosphere. It allows the tension between the characters in the house to be felt much more severely, and the zombie attacks to be that much scarier. It could never live up to what the first film achieved, but I think it reimagines enough to stand apart from the other tired retreads and offers a severely underappreciated zombie flick. You know, Cooper, I've only been around you a minute or two, but that's enough time for me to know that I don't like you very much. I'm sure you feel the same about me, so let's just try to stay out of each other's way, all right? Number two, Maniac. Because you think I'm stupid? Why do you act like I don't exist? I never wanted to hurt you. But you made me. The Maniac remake appeared completely out of nowhere to shock everyone, make the King of Twinks Elijah Woods genuinely scary, and then quietly drifted into obscurity. Which sucks, because it's a beautiful, stylish take on a journey into the mind of a disturbed young man. We get to see all the grisly scenes he goes through directly through his own POV, making sure you can't escape a single detail of the numerous violent incidents, and filmmaking wise it's a real achievement. Surprisingly, it was a special effects extravaganza, and the violence is very effective in making you squirm. The synth-heavy soundtrack is stunning and it adds a ton of atmosphere, and the whole film is layered in this thick sense of dread as we watch Elijah slowly grow more and more insane. The suspense is always high with such an unstable villain, and there are several shocking scenes that will no doubt haunt you for a while. I find all of the performances brilliant. It utilises Wood's boyish charms to disarm you before going into a rampage and scalping another poor woman. People complained the movie looked too clean and modern, but I personally thought it had a superb visual style that put you directly into the feet of a murderer. It's a beautiful look into an ugly mind, and it's more than worth your time if you have the stomach for it. Come, I think we need to have a serious... <laughs> and number one, Suspiria. <laughs> yes, feed me your hate. Remaking Dario Argento's horror masterpiece seemed like sacrilege, since it was so unique and hyper-stylized, it seemed pointless to try, it feels timeless. The Amazon Studios version has some of the biggest cinematic balls I've ever seen, and in my opinion it really paid off despite all the hate it gets. Instead of the vibrant colours of the original, we're treated to an icy cold muted colour palette, and it chooses to root the movie in the realm of the realistic, with much of the terror gleamed from horrific Cronenberg-esque body horror, rather than the 77 version which kind of eschews time and place and the horror is more supernatural based. The plot diverges massively from the original, particularly the last act, but it's all the better for it as it completely owns the undeniably intriguing witch lore and expands on it immensely. It's a tad too long, a whole hour more than the original, but it needed to be to fit in the extra plot elements. It lures you in with its hypnotic pace and dreaded tone before shocking you to the core with extremely vile visuals. It's a very ethereal experience and I personally enjoyed the pace it flows at. <laughs> It does its own thing, and thank fuck it did. If it just remade the original straight, people would be complaining about how hollow and pointless it was. It takes the phrase, be a voice not an echo, to heart. It changes so much and it paid off, and people were angry, because they prefer seeing a car crash than someone making their destination. There's no denying it's a bold film that wasn't afraid to offer people an alternative experience to the original. If you want to watch the original, it's there, don't worry. 
and if you wave it off because it changes so much, then you're missing out. It's one of the most divisive remakes ever, and I'm on the side that loves it. I love the original too. Instead of poo-pooing it, give it a watch and come to your own conclusions, rather than shouting mean names at it from the sidelines. You might be surprised what you can take away from it. Well, that was 10 horror remakes I don't think are as bad as people say. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments. All I know is, my voice is absolutely fucked after this two hour recording session.